So when I was first approached to present at this event, I was asked to write about something I was passionate about. For a lot of people, that may have been an easy ask. But I'm not like a lot of people. What am I passionate about? In fact, me trying to figure out what my passion was was how I spent my entire first year of college. In high school, I never really had to worry about it. The only real goal was getting into a good college. If it wasn't going to make me Ivy bound, then I wasn't interested. So all the extracurriculars I did, I definitely did enjoy. But I'll be honest, they were more so resume boosters than actual activities that I wanted to pursue. I mean, there's only a handful of us that actually enjoy waking up at 6 a.m. to attend speech and debate competitions that merely serve cold ham sandwiches for lunch. And by handful, I actually mean no one. <laughs> I remember my first day at college, I had signed up to take this English class. The instructor made all the students sit around in a circle and put up questions on the board we all had to answer in order to get to know each other better. The first couple questions were easy, generic ones like, what's your major? Where are you from? Why are you taking this class? I had been bombarded with these questions all throughout orientation, so I knew what to say for each one. But as my eyes fell upon the last question, I knew I had nothing to say. What are you passionate about? But being the naive girl I was, I assumed that other people were like me and wouldn't know what to say either. So the first boy goes and without hesitation says that his passion is playing the electric guitar. The next girl says that her passion is running track and field. Then the third boy says his passion is chemistry. Nevertheless, I never spoke to him again because I don't trust anyone who loves chemistry that much. <laughs> but the circle was coming to a close and it was almost my turn. What could I possibly say? I hated chemistry. I definitely did not enjoy running and I could barely play the piano, much less the guitar. But I had to come up with something. So I said the first thing that came to my mind. I like playing the ukulele. Now this would have been a completely fine response, but the problem was I didn't even own a ukulele, much less know how to play one. The real reason I said that was because I thought the boy who was playing the electric guitar was cute, and if we ever spoke, I wanted us to have something to talk about. <laughs> Too bad we never spoke. But I remember walking out of the classroom that day thinking, what is wrong with you? How do you not have one single thing you're passionate about? Surrounding myself on a campus filled with 40,000 students who all seemed to know what their purpose was, was not encouraging to me at all. I was stuck in a hole of self-pity with no idea of what I wanted to do or who I wanted to become. I was going through a life crisis and it was the, only the first day of college. When I asked my family and friends for advice, they all said, find what you're good at and explore it. So that's what I did, or tried to do. I tried out for a dance team, I applied to different clubs, and I even tried acing chemistry. And I didn't do so well in any of them. By the time second semester rolled around, after wallowing in sadness for months, I'd realized that I was on a pointless mission and had come to a conclusion. Passion is overrated. It's just this idea that's been implanted into our minds that we have to find this one thing we're good at, hold on to it, never let it go, and hopefully make a profession out of it. And from this, I've realized that we have misconceived what passion really is and how to go about finding it. You see, we love what we are good at. We find skills that we are proficient in, regardless of whether or not it's something we want to do, and often mistake what we're good at for what we're passionate for. Look, I'm great at washing dishes, but that doesn't mean that's something I want to do for the rest of my life. <laughs> being good at something doesn't always mean being passionate about something, and I am living proof of that. I went into UC Berkeley as a molecular and cell biology major on the pre-med track. In high school, biology was the only subject that wasn't particularly difficult. I didn't really have any experience in the medical field, but it was always something I was interested in. But being pre-med at Berkeley took me for a wild ride. I would often stay up late doing labs and assignments only to do below average on all the quizzes. I would often spend weeks in advance studying for exams only to barely scrape by. To put it lightly, I was by no means good at biology or chemistry. Yet it has been a year since my time at Berkeley has begun and I'm still learning and appreciating it. But many of us have mistaken passion for proficiency, myself included, that we often forget about something worth so much more. Curiosity. People always ask me, why are you studying to become a doctor? I was always interested in medicine, but I didn't really know why. OK, maybe I did. <laughs> but for the longest time, I didn't really have an answer. 
there would be many days where I would wake up only knowing that the mitochondria was the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> but after my first year at Berkeley, I found that the answer to this question is quite simple. Despite my, how should I put it nicely, lack of success, passion is not motivating me to keep learning. Curiosity is. Learning about biology and becoming a doctor is what I am most curious about. I am curious about how stem cells are able to specialize. I am curious about how we're able to understand diseases. I am curious about how we can use gene manipulation to prevent diseases. But this lack of curiosity for many of us is why you see so many people working at the same job for decades. If what you like to do isn't really useful to you, your life, or society, it is frowned upon. So we acquire skill sets that people push us to pursue or that society deems acceptable and often forget why we do what we do. As a result, we acquire knowledge that is meaningful to society rather than what is meaningful to us. And on the way, lose out on our curiosity. Take, for example, Brandon Stanton, a young man who started off his career as a successful bonds trader in Chicago. His fear of getting fired and the sense that he was doing something people respected overtook him until he became obsessed with his job. But he soon found himself jobless and sleeping in an empty apartment in New York. He described the day he got fired as a good day because it forced him to ask the one question his previous job had prevented him from asking. What do I want to do with my time? Coupled with his love for photography and his curiosity about the people that passed him by on the streets, he was able to find and pursue his interests from what started off as a few simple photos soon turned into the worldwide phenomenon known as humans of New York. From this, I've come to understand that passion is a dangerous word. We have used it in a careless and harmful way where we force people to find something they're good at, limiting all of their potential and use it as a way to label and categorize them. Instead, let's replace passion with curiosity. Unlike how we've come to define passion, curiosity is a way to explore your interests in a much more unrestrained manner. It fuels genius rather than limit it. And most importantly, curiosity, while it may be forgotten, will never disappear. Passion oftentimes is fleeting. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it goes. But curiosity will always be there, lingering in the back of your mind. It will allow you to find skills that you're interested in. It will allow you to find what you're good at and maybe what you're not so good at. And it will guide you to find skills that are meaningful to you. So what am I passionate about? Becoming a doctor? Learning about biology? Playing the ukulele? I actually have one now. <laughs> I still don't know, and it's probably going to change. But that's OK. Because from what I've learned, it's not so much about finding and following your passion. It's so much more about cultivating your curiosity. And I challenge you all to do the same.